From building a railway in the unforgiving heat of the desert, to upgrading a research station at one of the coldest places on Earth, and from the biggest infrastructure project in the Himalayas, at heights of up to three, 700 meters, to one of the largest man-made holes in the world, here are the world's most extreme construction projects. And this is number five, the Rothera Research Station. Located in one of the most remote and inhospitable regions on Earth, where temperatures range from 5 degrees Celsius to minus 40 degrees Celsius, the United Kingdom is undertaking a $415 million megaproject. Every element of this endeavor, workers, equipment, and construction materials, had to be transported over 11,000 kilometers from the UK to Antarctica. But what exactly is being built here? This site is home to the largest British research station for polar studies, hosting numerous ongoing science projects in collaboration with the Netherlands. Among these is a critical initiative focused on real-time climate change research. By continuously monitoring Antarctic weather and wildlife, scientists aim to develop accurate climate models to predict rising sea levels. Over the years, additional buildings have been added to improve research capabilities at Antarctica's Rothera Research Station, which started as a small base for four people and now hosts up to 130 staff during the summer. The British government has been working on the $415 million Antarctic Infrastructure Modernization Program, the largest state-funded Antarctic project since the 1980s. As part of this initiative, many of the station's old buildings are being replaced. A new $55 million wharf was completed in 2020, and construction of the Energy Efficient Discovery Building, which will house field expedition support, medical facilities and offices, is set to finish in 2024. Number 4. The Etihad Railway The United Arab Emirates is constructing the ambitious $11 billion Etihad Railway, a 1,200-kilometer project connecting Abu Dhabi's Guayfat region to Fujairah Port and linking the UAE to Saudi Arabia. This railway is part of a broader vision shared by the Gulf Cooperation Council nations, Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, and the UAE. In response to the economic challenges from the 2008 financial crisis and the COVID-19 pandemic, these countries are collaborating on a $100 billion rail network to improve connectivity between ports and industrial centers, aiming to diversify their economies and reduce dependence on oil for a more sustainable future. The UAE's Etihad Railway megaproject faces extreme challenges as it passes through one of the hottest regions on Earth, where daytime temperatures can reach 50 degrees Celsius. To manage the heat, construction crews work at night when temperatures drop to around 30 degrees Celsius. In addition to the heat, the project also contends with vast amounts of sand, which can disrupt construction and damage the railway. To address this, nearby sand dunes are being converted into clay, a process that takes years while trees are being planted along the railway to serve as natural barriers against sand accumulation. The Etihad Railway Mega Project is being built in two phases and is set to be fully operational by 2024. Phase 1, starting in 2009, involves two tracks covering 264 kilometers, connecting the Shah and Habshan gas fields to the port of Ruiz. The project aims to reduce the UAE's carbon footprint, with each train journey removing about 300 trucks from the roads and cutting carbon emissions by 70 to 80 percent. Phase 2 will add another 600 kilometers to the network, linking the East Coast and key industrial hubs, further enhancing sustainability and connectivity. Number 3. Norway's New Coastal Highway Norway, known for its stunning landscapes, faces significant travel challenges due to its rugged terrain. A trip from Trondheim to Bergen currently takes 21 hours and requires seven ferry crossings. To improve this, Norway is undertaking a $47 billion highway upgrade, which will include floating bridges, submerged tunnels, and the world's deepest road tunnel, the Rogfast Tunnel. Construction on the Rogfast Subsea Tunnel began in 2018 and is expected to be finished by 2026, marking the first of these ambitious crossings. The Rogfast Tunnel, part of Norway's coastal highway project, has faced cost overruns, pushing its completion to at least 2031. Once finished, the 30-kilometer tunnel will be the world's longest and deepest subsea tunnel, reaching nearly 400 meters below sea level. The most challenging part of the project is the Sognefjord crossing, as the fjord is Norway's largest and deepest, with a width of over 37 kilometers and a depth of 1.3 kilometers. To accommodate heavy maritime traffic, the crossing must include a shipping lane at least 400 meters wide and provide a 70-meter vertical clearance above and 20 meters below sea level. To tackle the challenges of the Sognefjord crossing, the project team has proposed several innovative solutions. One option is a meter suspension bridge with support towers meters tall, making it the world's tallest bridge. 
Another idea is a floating bridge tethered to the shorelines, though it would need to be raised for ship passage. A third proposal is a submerged floating tunnel, suspended from pontoons to allow ships to pass above. Lastly, a hybrid solution combining a floating pontoon bridge and a submerged tunnel has been suggested, which would be the first of its kind if implemented. Number 2. Tibet's High-Speed Railway China is building an extreme 1,800-kilometer electric high-speed railway from Lhasa, Tibet to Chengdu, crossing the Tibetan Plateau at an average altitude of over 4,500 meters. The project is divided into three sections, with two completed. The Lhasa to Ningchi section, costing nearly $6 billion, includes 41 tunnels and 121 bridges to manage steep altitude changes. The trains feature advanced technology, such as oxygen supply systems and UV protective windows, to cope with the high elevations. The most challenging section of the railway, however, is still to be completed. Construction of the 1,000-kilometer middle section of the railway between Ya'an and Ningchi began in late 2020. The region, prone to frequent earthquakes, landslides, snow avalanches, and floods, poses significant challenges. The permafrost round in Tibet, which expands and shrinks seasonally, had to be avoided. To manage these conditions, 90% of the railway is being built on viaducts or through tunnels, making it a complex and costly project. Over 100 medical facilities are set up along the route for worker safety. Despite extreme temperature variations, the railway is expected to be completed by 2030. Once completed, the railway will greatly improve access to the stunning Tibetan region and be a crucial part of China's infrastructure development. Now, let's dive into the diamond mine feature. The Mir Diamond Mine, located in Siberia, Russia is one of the deepest open-pit mines in the world, reaching over 500 meters deep. Despite the region's harsh, freezing winters, Soviet geologist Yuri Kabardin's successful 1950s expedition uncovered diamond deposits, leading to the mine's establishment. The mine's depth is so significant that iconic structures like the Eiffel Tower, Empire State Building, or Lakta Center could fit inside with room to spare. Diamond mining at the Mir Diamond Mine began in the late 1950s, but the harsh Siberian weather posed significant challenges. Winters with temperatures below minus 30 degrees Celsius made materials brittle and froze machinery oil, requiring explosives to break through the permafrost. The mine had to be covered at night to protect equipment, and summer brought mud, forcing buildings to be constructed on piles to prevent further instability. The processing plant had to be relocated over 20 kilometers away. In August 2017, a water inrush flooded the mine, but 143 of the 151 miners on shift were rescued. The search for the remaining eight miners was unfortunately abandoned shortly afterwards. Mining is still carried out in the Mir mine today, but the whole operation has moved underground. What do you think about these extreme construction sites? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.